month or thereabout, there's one specific topic that we've been digging into. We've been, it's been, it has been very, very wonderful teaching. And I don't know if anybody will, you know, any one of you remember what, we, what we've been talking about for the past one month? Anybody? Lovely? Deliverance. Deliverance from where? Huh? We've talked about the deliverance. We've been teaching about deliverance. And we said what? The type of things that we need to be delivered from are what? Joshua. What are the things that we, that we said we should be, that we, you know, that we need to be delivered from? Deliverance from sin. Deliverance from self. Anybody? Deliverance from the demons itself. What else? Praise the Lord. And what was our Bible, our memory verse? Anybody? Huh? Obadiah 1 verse 17. And what does it say? Upon Mount Zion, this what? Holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Here this morning we will change it a little bit. So where it says house of Jacob, we shall put the house of covenant family. We shall possess our possession. Let's read it together. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. 1, 2, 3, go. Let's read it. House of covenant shall possess their possession. And that will be our testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of God, we all shall possess our possessions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The devil will not be able to tamper with our destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we said... Deliverance from sin, deliverance from all that, deliverance from demons. And we thought about how, who can curse. Hallelujah. And we said, you know, a lot of people tend to curse themselves. They, it's called self-imposed curse. And some people could be cursed by God. And people that have authority over you can curse you. Praise the Lord. And so that is why you have to be very careful. Husband curse their wives. Just be saying, oh, you never know how to cook my food. And if eventually, and that person might never really know how to cook it. And that might be a huge problem. So we talked about that last week. I'm just trying to recap everything for those that were not here last week. So we said, parents, parents curse their children unknowingly. It's not like they, they, they intend to do it. Maybe it could be slipped of tongue or they just, it just came out, you know, like out of their mouth. Like I said, oh, you will never make it. You will never succeed. Oh, you don't know how to do it. You will never know how to do it. That word never. Let's refrain from using it. Because you don't know. When you speak it, and guess what? The demons are there. The angels of darkness are there when you speak it. You might not be able to take it back. Praise the Lord. So let's be very careful. And those people that have authority over you, when they curse, that's, you have to go through deliverance for those things not to happen in your life. Because most people tends to suffer from it and they not knowing that they are suffering from the curse that came from their parents. 
praise the Lord. Some people, when they were in school, that was when their parents accidentally cursed them. And the parents did not do it, you know, purposely. It probably came out. And guess what? The devil, the demon stamped it. The angel stamped it. Wow, that's it from your mom. Wow, I'm going to run with it. Wow, they stamped it. And now when you grow up and you started suffering from those curses. Some people, the parents say, oh, oh, you will never have children. If you treat me like this, your children is going to treat you the same way. Praise the Lord. And when you now grow old and you now see your children not even looking at you at all, they don't even care about you. They don't show no patch of compassion. They, were, they don't care. They're just careless. Some kids curse their parents. They talk to them anyhow because the mom, their great-grandfather or great-grandmother had cursed the father. And this thing now start happening in their lives. So those are the things we need to be very careful. And we said... You know, leaders, maybe you are in school, your teacher, your, your, you know, your supervisor probably put a, you know, curse on you. And now you leave that job. You can't even find a job because he already cursed you. Maybe you did something terrible, you know, something that he did not like. You now say, oh, you'll never get a job like this ever in your life. And guess, lo and behold. Everywhere you apply, no job. Everywhere you go, this you've been, you know, no favor. You apply for a job that looks like it or a little bit more higher paid than that, you couldn't get a job. Why? Because your former supervisor had cursed you, put a curse on you that you will never get something like that. So we need to be, those are the things that, that happened that we need to be delivered from. Sometimes we don't know, but when you now start looking at your life scene, there's a traces of, wow, I couldn't even hold a job since I left that place. I couldn't even, I couldn't, I couldn't sustain this since I left the place. So you start to look at them. Once you recognize it, then you must do something about it. But if you don't recognize it, you continue to live in that curse. And that could be very, very dangerous. And we said uh, last week, um, pastors accidentally curse. Maybe, um, you know, maybe whatever it is that, you know, that came out of their mouth. Maybe, you know, you know how some people, they have uh, altercations and they just talk and they, you know, somehow the curse came out. If that, if that person don't refuse to do anything about it, the other party will carry that curse for the rest of their lives. Will it make you heaven? You can still make heaven, but you just live a, a, a life that's full of curse. And that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. And we said, husband, because you have authority over your wife, over your family, you are the head of the household. We said, husband too can curse the wife. Look at how Jacob cursed Rebecca. We said that last, um, last, um, last week. She did not, he did not know that she had stolen that, that little um, craft that, the, that, um, that her dad has. But he know the Laban he accused Jacob that of stolen it, did not know the, the wife was the one that, that 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 stole it. Praise the Lord. And he said, Whoever that took this stuff will not live, will die. And guess what? After years I had, guess what? During the birth, guess what happened to her? She died. Praise the Lord. So but you need to be very, very careful what comes out of your mouth. So today, we shall be talking about the example of curses. Example of curses. Are you with me so far? So we talked about who can curse, what curses means, and we've dealt with covenant curses and all that stuff. Praise the Lord. So this morning, we shall be talking about the example of curses. Let's open our Bible to Genesis chapter 27, verse 13. 27 verse 13. Is there anybody in the, at the console that can help me a little bit? Verse 13. Talking about the Isaac and, um, and his mom. He said, but his mother said to him, let your curse. This is, let me just, you know, recap this. This is what's, um, 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 hold on. 
27. Yeah, 27 verse 13. And he says, but his mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go. Get them for me. And he went and got them and brought them to his mother. And his mother made a savory food such as his father loved. Praise the Lord. This is Rebecca speaking. She literally put that curse on herself. She literally put the curse on herself. How? It was when they were trying to, you know, Jacob and Esau, and he wanted to, you know, somehow change the destiny of the two. So she already had, you know, about the promise of God concerning the, 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 the brother, and she just wanted to, she wanted to make it happen her way. She wanted to make it happen no matter what. So Jacob, very, very, very smart guy, he said, if, if this man finally recognized and realized this is not me, number one, I'm lying to my father. Number two, he, he might put a curse on me. Why, why would you want me to do this, mother? He was really concerned, like, mom, why would you want me to do this? If this man finds out that I am not my brother, and he, you know, you know realize that this is not um, Esau, then what's going to happen? He's going to curse me. And he will be very, very upset. And guess what happened? B Rebecca said, no, 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 son. Don't, 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 don't worry. Just, just, just listen to me. I'm your mother. Listen to me. You, at this point, you need to listen to me. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. And if eventually your father decided to curse you, let that curse be on me. Praise the Lord. So she put that curse on on herself many times we do that because we want to prove a point to somebody else many times we we do it's not like we we we, we deliberately do it because i'm just trying to prove a point to you that you don't worry i got your back if whatever is going to come let it come to me Praise the Lord. And guess what happened? The demons, the devil, the angels, and guess what happened to them? They fly with it, they run with it, and they stop it on the walls. And now they begin to monitor your progress. When the time comes for you and that exact pronunciation that you made for yourself, when it comes, guess what happened? They will unplug it. They say, here you go. Come on. And, and go and manifest. Praise the Lord. So we need to be very, very careful. We don't need to prove any point to nobody. Let your conscience, let Holy Spirit continue to guide you. If I'm telling you this is what happened, if I told you this is what I did, and you don't believe me, it's, it's on you. I, I don't have to prove a point to you. I don't have to prove any point. I don't have to convince you. If I try to convince you enough to tell you the truth that I know, the Bible says once you know the truth, the truth shall do what? It shall set you free. If I speak the truth to you and it's not enough and now you want me to step out of my comfort zone and to say things that I shouldn't be. No, I'm not going to do that. So let's be very careful from uh, trying to put, I mean, uh, prove a point to other party. Don't, 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 don't do it because you might be pushed to say something that you're not supposed to say. And guess what? You now self-impose a curse on yourself. And if you don't recognize it when it happened, how it happened, guess what? Such person might live with that curse for the rest of their lives. So we have to be very, very, very careful. What happened to her? She is served, imposed the curse on herself. Self imposed, cursed on herself. She put the curse on herself, and because she told them, No, 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 don't worry. Let the curse come over me. Let the curse be on me. Let the curse be on me. Don't worry. If your dad decided to, to, to do this, don't worry. I'll take the curse. And guess what happened? 300 years after the curse came back. Praise the Lord. And we will not curse ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Joshua on the walls of Jericho. Let's open the book of Joshua chapter 6 verse 26. And let somebody else open the book of 1 Samuel chapter 20. Or can anybody give me an example of self-imposed curse? That's something that just random, that you just say randomly. Something that you just randomly, you know, and you don't really see anything that's wrong until later in the days or later in, in your, the years. Anybody can, you know, example of self-imposed curses. Hallelujah. How about just saying, oh no, I will never be able to get this. No, I, will ne- I don't think I can, I, can, I don't think I can graduate. It, it's a self-imposed curse. I can't, yes, we said it last week too. I can't. So the three words that we need to stay away from, I can't and I, I, I will never. Praise the Lord. Because those are the things that the demons, the devil, the Satan himself is waiting for you and I to say. Because once you say, I will never get it, and guess what? Who will never get it? Okay, uncle. can never i will never be i can you know i will forget but i can never maybe i'll forgive you but i can never forget memory comes back if you snap you'll be like wow i remember this praise the lord we literally put in a self-imposed curses on ourselves doing that if you if the bible says who son of man is made free is what is free indeed forgive completely don't put because those are the things that will say no i will never do this no i will never forgive her i will never go there again i will never talk to her again and guess what you might not even when you have the chance to talk to that person or to speak to that individual and guess what events start happening the person might die in the process because the demon doesn't want you to talk to that person so that way the curse you already pronounced on yourself will come to pass and that is what the demons is all about that's what the enemy is all about they, they, they want that curse that negative thing thought that you already said come to pass they all oh, that's what they were looking for and that's what they've been looking for they were looking for opportunity for you not to be able to achieve that praise the lord pastor um, there's a verse, um, you know, we, at times we, we do things out of excitement or out mm. of, uh, and that's why we, as Christians, we have to be very careful. When you are so excited, don't open your mouth. Mm. Only, pr- only praise God. Don't start speaking because you'll talk things which will be either uh, of pride or things which may bring a, a curse on yourself. Mm. And when you are so angry or when you are uh, upset you rather just keep quiet than opening your mouth because you can do things again which may become a curse upon you so when your emotions are not uh, you know it's, it's, at, not, stable. At, it's not stable mm. that's not the time for you to speak anything you rather be quiet even gloomy if you want or moody or happy mm. praising god but don't open your mouth Amen. now remember this was a king um Jephthah. Jephthah in, in Judges eleven thirty one, Jephthah made this vow to the Lord. 
that if indeed you will deliver the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out of the door of my house to greet me on my triumphant, on my triumphant return from the Ammonites will belong to the Lord and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. So Jephthah says, he it, it tells God that if you give me victory over the Ammonites, whatever comes out of my house first will be a sacrifice, a burnt sacrifice to you, God. So even, in, that's why we even make vows. I know I've, I've been discussing this. Uh, um, you know, my wife is my is my uh, my spiritual checkmate. We we know we share and <laughs> and we, we we do lots of references. And even at times when things are not working for us, some of the vows that at times we make, or we make people to do to take those vows. And a very simple example. If you know you don't have uh, to come up and say okay. When they say, for example, I say, okay, if you want to support the church with a thousand dollars, come to the front. Check your soul. Don't just stand and say, because the man of God has said, and then you go there. Many people in church today are poor yes. because of the vows they made, and they never fulfill those vows. Many people in church. That's why you're saying, why are people so poor? And why are the heathens not so poor? It's because they make their promises and they deliver. But you want to do this vow because of either the excitement or because of the fear or they will say why is he sitting down you rather sit down and save your soul than stand and say i'll give ten thousand dollars and you 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 will not be able to, to do it so you rather and they say at times we say oh it's by faith so just come check your faith too <laughs> you have to check you have to because it, you, it's not my faith it has to be your faith That's true. I know I can stand because I know God has always done it. I believe I have my, my faith in God. Mm. But if you know you have no faith in God, don't work on my faith. Work with your faith. Mm. Poverty comes because we fail to deliver. We take vows and fail to deliver. And now Jephthah in uh, Judges 11.31, you see what happens? He goes, God gives him the victory he was praying for because God will always do it. And what comes out of his house? His only daughter. His only daughter. So, making some of these vows out of excitement. And Paul says, be very careful. Don't be, be less to speak. You should abound in hearing and, 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 and few in words. Because by many words will come out sin, lies. You know, you try to defend yourself. You try to justify everything. Be a man of few words. Be a person of few words. But open your ears. Incline them to the word of God. So, if Jephthah knew God will deliver... He would have made that kind of vow. And now he had to give out, he had to, to sacrifice his daughter. And the, I only, mean, so, the only daughter. So that is what we do as Christians. We have to be very careful. Let's not just open our mouths. Hmm. You know. Yeah. Hallelujah. So basically, Pastor, you want to say something, Uncle? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the tongue, you know, the, the tongue is deadly. It says, you know, it could give life or it could give birth. I mean, death. Life or death come in the power of the oh, tongue. tongue. Hallelujah. So basically, let's do, don't let your emotion dictate your, your action. Okay, that's what I want to say. Don't let your emotion dictate your action. So, you know... Even if you are so excited, you, you just want a million dollars. Somebody just promised you. But meanwhile, you say, don't worry, God, if you give me one million dollars, I'm going to break every place down. I'm going to build this. I'm going to do that. Praise the Lord. Calm, calm down a little bit. Yes, it's a good thought. But guess what, though? The devil is there to tap into that. And that is why we pray that God don't allow the enemy to swallow my testimonies. Praise the Lord. Because all he's looking for is the curse that comes out of your mouth. I was listening to one of my spiritual father. He said there's some things that the curse that's, that's almost irreversible is the one that we impose on ourselves. Praise the Lord. Almost irreversible. It will take you extra step, extra prayer, because you said it yourself. You said you imposed it on yourself. Rebecca did the same thing on herself. No wonder. At the point, he, she was like, when, when 
when uh, what's her name was going to get married, she said, it, w- 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 I would rather die. She was the, the, she was so much in agony, like she didn't she didn't see herself moving forward. Self-imposed curse, and that is what we see these days. These kids, they look at themselves immediately. They said, actually, I want the children here. They need to stop saying, I can't do it. I don't get it. I will never get it. But you will never get it because when you now start supposed to be getting it, you don't get it and you can't get it. And you're wondering, why is my life like this? But oh, you go, you've been putting this curse on yourself from the, from the beginning. I can't do it. No, I don't want, I can't, I don't think I can do it. I can't, do, and you will never be able to do it. Praise the Lord. Pastor. Uh, talking about the excitement dictating your, your decision or what you say, you just reminded me, is my testimony, reminded me of how my mom used to speak words. Mom, you call everybody outside. And so, uh, when my brother, my elder brother, he was the only one working, we were still in school, and sometimes he, he could bring, he could buy something to my mom, for my mom, and bring it. So because of that excitement, she tells you, hold that thing well, don't break it. That is my, my son is the one who bought that thing for me. Will you ever buy that, something like that for me? You see, all the time, when he buys something for her because of that happiness and excitement she could speak negative things to us because we are, she thought that we are mishandling what her her son has bought for her and so when we we, we were through with school we went to the city to look for, empl- for for a job there were no jobs and we were staying in our brother's house and one day my mom came and we were miserable. My husband can, can testify that because we were neighbors that time. And our lives were not good. My brother's lives were good, but our lives were not good. Me and my sister, we were staying in my brother's house. But even getting just one dollar to just blow dry your hair was, was a problem. And so my mom told me, we have to go back to the village. I told her, I asked her, if we go back to the village, is it going to make life uh, better for, for us? And my elder sister told my mom, she said, mom, all this is what you used to say, to talk, to, to speak. When our brother brought you things and you spoke, uh, negative about us and this is now what is happening to us and she told my mom you have to pray for us and you have to cancel this in this house and you have to cancel all those things so that our 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 doors can be open because what you used to say you used to say will you ever give me this will you ever give me some money will you ever buy anything for me and so they were blocking all the avenues and so my mom prayed for us and and she 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 got it because the other parents will say you 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 don't have to tell me this but she it, it sank in in herself in, in in her because of the way she saw our situation and so there are things when you talk about excitement you are happy and is that process of praising the person who has made you happy you are cursing another person yes hallelujah and I, actually i could really you know uh attest to that because growing up too i i experienced that with my um my um my dad he um he he kind of you know how some parents have their favorites right so i was the baby of the house so he loves me more than anybody else so he always put a little bit, little bit, little bit on the, you know, on the table to eat. So when everybody else don't eat, he make sure my, he iron my clothes. He, so they call me the spoiled brat of daddy, right? So by my mom, he doesn't want to hear that. There's this particular thing that mom always tells me. And that up to now, 
I, I, it's just, it was just God that delivered me from that. When I hold anything glass, I will break it. Because when I see her coming, it's the thing we just scattered. One day she will get her, I know, you break this. You will continue to break it. You will never be able to, you will just break, break, break. So, and, and honestly, up to now, so it, 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 people, I, I, I tend not to watch glasses. If people, even people that come to my house, they know I use, I use those plastic cups. I'm being honest with you. Because when I touch the plate, it's, there's a possibility for it to drop. Praise the Lord. We, at a point when one, one day we had to really, you know, I went to my mom, all of us, we asked her. Because there's one thing that the Bible is so clear. I love the word of God. The prayers that you need from your parents will sustain your life. No matter how much you fasted, no matter how much you pray, if your parents can reverse anything and go on their knees and pray for you, no matter what it is, the thing will be clear. Your ways will be so prosperous and smooth. No wonder when Jacob, when, when Isaac needed to pray for those children, he was so specific. He needed to release some specific blessings. Hallelujah. So look at those ones that their parents prayed on, see what happened to their lives. So as parents, be careful what comes out of your mouth over your children. Because the Bible says you have that authority over them. Remember, you, 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 there, there was one this umbilical cord that connected you. So you can literally change things in the spirit. You can change things spiritually. You can move things around and go on your knees. If things are not going well with your children, go on your knees and talk to God. I said, God, you gave me this child. I want A and B to happen. And guess what? It will continue to happen. It will start happening right in your face. And that is why you have to be very, very careful what you say when you are excited, when you are sad, when you are moody, concerning your children, be very, very careful. Don't just speak anyhow. Be very careful. Don't just say because you are so excited. Now you say this, like Pastor Sophie said, it will affect the other children. Praise the Lord. Sister. For those of us that's just joining us, we've been dealing with deliverance for the past one month. We've said all kinds of stuff, things that we need to be delivered from. Now we're talking about self-imposed curses that's really affecting our lives. Praise the Lord. So I just wanted to add a little bit. You see, there is something about our tongue and our utterances. They are connected to your emotions. Mm. But there's one that I know for a fact that is always a problem, and that is exaggerations. Mm. The thing is, sometimes as Christians, many of these things, we don't even understand it if we are not Christians. As unbelievers, you may not even understand what your word is doing or what your word is not doing for you. That is why even the Bible says your words can change your situation. Now, with exaggerations, I might even be trying to tell Aunt Pastor Sophie or my daddy or my mommy or anybody my... my testimony and then because i want it to sound so believably amazing i exaggerate it and people do it unconsciously we do it we are human beings we do it a lot now in the process of doing this you may say some things upon yourself that is negative because you're trying to prove a point look if it wasn't because if if i lie about this thing, let me not get anything i want you know things this kind of things you say it because you feel like you're saying something you're trying to you're trying to say something to impact somebody else and then you exaggerate and then you say things to harm yourself in the process so as believers that's why the bible says there are several parts in the bible that literally says be slow to speak so as christians i don't know how we want to in interpret it or anyhow but count your words because everything you say there is power in it life or death is powerful so anything you say anything at all is powerful so you can you can you can say things to your children you can say things to yourself you may not even mean it in a negative way but because you're trying to make it look very 
you know, very palatable. You're trying to make it look like my testimony is amazing. You have to hear it. And then you exaggerate it. And sometimes you say things that is wrong. Things that, and the devil is seeking whom to devour. He's wide. He's not, just, he's not just trying to curse you or make you, uh, have, make you have issues. When he says seeking who to devour, even the little things. He's looking for the slight, there's, a, there's an adage in my, in my language. It says if the, if the wall is not cracked, a lizard cannot get in. So if you don't keep a little hole, the devil cannot get in. And the devil will squeeze in no matter how tiny the hole is. May God help us all. Wow, it's, it's, this is very, very deep. Very, very deep. Power in our tongue. And most people that they are suffering from this, the, the, the ones that they are not a child of God, I could imagine. Because they, they have no clue what is going on. They just, some of them just think, oh, it, it's normal. It, it's not normal. It is not normal when you see it, like we said, I think two weeks ago, you see it happening in your life. You turn around. You see your other child going through the same thing. You turn to your left. You see, ah, this one too. Then it's not normal. Then somebody needs to do something. If your parent is still alive, go and look for your mother. Go and look for your father. And ask them to pray over you. Somebody say, she doesn't even know how to pray. Just say, tell her, say something good to me. Whatever you want it, reverse everything. Just keep saying, I reverse every negative pronunciation. Because there's some, pastor. At times we say just the words, but also the actions. You know, hmm. if you look at the lives of many, of, us, of many people who are struggling with life, some of them have even, even money, but they're struggling. Some of them, you may look at them and say they are wealthy, but they are struggling. They don't have the peace which surpasses all human understanding. Now, why is that? There's one commandment that God says that if you do, you'll have long life. Now, long life is not about you living to 200 years old. Long life begins with now. Why live 100 years of agony? Why live 200 years of pain? It begins now. Long life begins now. Begin to live the life now. Now, what is the problem? How have we related to our parents? Spiritual parents and biological parents. But more, it's most importantly, because there is a connection in the blood, the biological parent, how have you uh, related to your parents? Even if you are, they never raised you. Some of us, I mean, people, some people never saw their mothers or their fathers. But how, what is your heart saying? What is your mind saying towards them that you never saw them? So all that, God looks at the heart. The Bible says that he searches the heart and examines the mind. So when God looks at your heart and at your mind, what is he seeing about that you are thinking or saying in your heart and in your spirit about your, about, about your parents, biological or spiritual? What, is, what are you saying in your heart? Now, if you do the actions that may, ha may make your parents cry, some, of, some parents will never say a word. Some parents will not even curse you because they don't want to speak. They are wise. But in their hearts, they are crying. So most people, and I see many young people who are all over the place, vagabonds. Why? Their actions towards their parents. There is no relationship. Another action, a very simple action, you have a hundred dollars, you cannot give your parent even one dollar. Forget about even God's money, you, because people rob God every day. But your parent, how many times have you shared that one dollar of sugar or of milk or bread with your parent? Now, when you don't do that, you have not said anything bad against them. You have not disobeyed them. You love them. But your actions towards your parent of denying them to test your sweat brings a curse on you. Yes. And many people don't know that they grow into old age crying. You see, somebody is 90 years old, still looking for a job. Mm. It is a curse. Mm. And they have children. They can't, they can't, they cannot look back and take care of their mom. I, I, I'm sorry to say this. I am very sorry to say. I realized 
that most parents in this country cannot do anything free for their own child. The child will look and say, oh, I still have to pay my mom. I still have to pay my mom. It's understandable. The government has made it so easy. But at the same time, it's time for us to start using your common sense. Praise the Lord. And let's use biblical teaching. What the Bible it says, honor your father and your mother. And that is the only thing the Bible put a clause to that ties to your longevity. That was the only thing. The only thing, growing up, that's stick in my head. And that's something I'm telling my children. I would uh, no, because I took care of my parents. When I first started making money, I would send money to my mom. My mom doesn't have to work anymore. Because every one of us is working and we have, right? We have to send money to them. Why? Because every time she receives this little talking, she goes on her knees and pray for us. She will wake up in the morning and she will begin to mention everybody's name. Those are the prayers that you and I need from your parents. No matter how smart you are, no matter where educated you think you are, no matter how much you think you know. Because if you don't receive those blessings, some will say, well, I grew up in a group home. But I don't get to know my mom. I don't, you have the chance to know your parents. I don't have the chance to, but it's still okay. You did not fall from heaven though. There was conception somewhere. It could be an alcoholic guy, a drug addict guy, but somehow, somehow, you were here. Who now raised you? Who cares? But where is your heart, though, towards those people that brought you to this life? Okay, you're here. Why? They should have left me in heaven. Well, you are not a mistake. The action was a mistake, but now you are here. What are you going to do to correct this so that the people that you're going to bring forth will not suffer from the same mess? I don't know if I'm, if I'm, if I'm communicating. Are, are, you, are we still together? So those are the things that's happening. We've so much tied our thing to the government. Well, you can imagine a whole mom because she's so overwhelmed. Do you want to take care of this child? We say, you know what, let me just call CPS on her. Let them take it. Let me put him back in the system. Well, the child is in the system. Now they are helping you to raise it. Where's your heart? And guess what? When that child starts suffering because of what you did, maybe there was no money. Understandable. But do you have, you, have you ever thought about it and go on your knees and pray and reverse those curse that you didn't even do? You didn't even know when it came out of your mouth. Sometimes it's from how I thought, our mind. Oh my God. Why would she do this to me? And that was the only question you said. But your heart, just because of that question, you're already cursing that child. And no wonder he cannot stay in a marriage. No wonder everybody that comes to him or her doesn't even like him. No wonder when he goes to work, everybody just say, what's going on? They just don't like me. I guess that's my cross. If it's not your cross, something somewhere, somehow went wrong. So I pray as a child of God, as I begin to think about this, let's go home. Think through it. If you see have your parent, call that parent. Talk to the person. If your parent is deceived, go on your knees and begin to reverse every negative curse that they might somehow have pronounced while you're not there. And if you have children, pick up the phone, call them. One by one, tell them to forgive you. If you, paraventure, they're going to ask you, Mom, what are you talking about? It's okay, they don't have to understand. But you and I have a different understanding right now. Something different that we've never heard before. Maybe we heard it, but we didn't take it serious. Let's take it serious. Let's take a little bit. And I see God changing our lives and changing the life of our children in the name of Jesus Christ. It makes it a lot easier for God to answer your prayer when you do what is needful. You make it a lot easier. Some people just pray, pray, pray. Somebody told me the other day, well, I don't think God can answer me. Uh, he, he God only hear your prayer because you're a pastor. No. He has nothing to do with the heart, but you search yourself. The Bible says, he searches the heart. He has nothing to do with your, your title, nothing. A little girl can pray and, 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 and pray for deliverance and you receive your miracles. 
And meanwhile, that apostle is in the crying, 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 praying. Jesus will be like, oh, oh wow, God, leave me alone. Because your prayer becomes an abomination. Hallelujah. Sorry, we'll continue next week. Pastor, let's round up. So we'll continue next week. I thought we'll be able to finish it up today. We have two more points. Then hopefully we'll deal with that next week and we, we um, and God will help us. Is that okay, Daddy? God bless you. Put your hands together one more time. He said, um, there's power of life and death in our tongue. So we can either speak life with our mouth or we can speak death. And uh, there are two organs in, in our body that the Lord put two leads. Our eyes. There are some things, not everything you have to look at. And our mouth so that we can keep it short. It's not everything you have to say. It's not every time you have to open your mouth to speak. Because in the multitude of words is sin before you know it. And like the example of the testimony, I've said it here many times. In the in the in trying to 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 enhance our testimony we we garnish it with things that are not really there just to give it more impact at the end of the day we end up you know lying you know what we are using to try and give glory to god we end up lying about it one minute 30 seconds of testimony what happened what did you do what the lord did praise the lord but now when you start speaking stories that's when before you know it you start adding things that were not actually there we need to be very careful he said, do not say to the angel, I, I said it in error. Once you say it, it is taken and the angel is running with it. So we need to be careful what we say. And we, when we make a vow, there's, there's nothing wrong with making a vow before God. But make a vow knowing fully well that you will, is binding on you to fulfill. Because sometimes you make a vow because you, you want to make it binding on you. That God, if you do this, I will do this. But many times we take our vow for levity. Vow is not something we should take for levity. Because it has very serious spiritual consequence. But there is nothing bad in making a vow... Just like Anna did. Anna said, Lord, if you give me a male child, all the days of, my, of his life, he will serve you. And immediately he was weaned from the breast. She took him directly to the house of God. And he became a foremost apostle a, and a prophet for God. So we must be careful what we say. And when we say it, we must ensure that we back it up with action. God bless us, even as we do so. We will not use our mouth to bring curse on ourselves and curse on our children in the name of Jesus. We will not, as parents, we will not provoke our children to wrath, even by our actions or in actions in the name of Jesus. And our children will, should, will honor us, will honor their parents so that they can enjoy life to fullest in the name of Jesus because many are alive but they are not living when you say live to a long life it meaning that you are living good life it is not the length of the years that matter it is the quality of it and I pray that all of us will live to a good old age in good health and in in plenty in the name of Jesus father Lord we thank you Lord for your word this morning 
ask the Lord that you equip us and uh, give us the ability to, 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 to close our, our lips and not to speak death into our destiny. Thank you, everlasting Father. And we decree and declare that everyone that might have spoken anything negative about his or her life or the life of his children, that Lord, as we cancel such even this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. As we go into the worship service, we ask the Lord that you go with us and let your presence fill this house and granting everyone an encounter of a lifetime. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.